Babylon with folks that look like us. Mm -hmm. You see, mm -hmm. we give energy to any topic in any sphere and in any area of people activity. So when I, when we're involved in anything, mm -hmm. think about what happened in Israel. Think about what's happening now there. Did you see the outburst of white folks here in the United States and, and, and even in Israel where a famous um, entertainer that was pumping up the IDF, which is the um, military forces there. Um, I'm trying to not to use that name as much that the, 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 the yeah. folk. <laughs> yeah, please, I mean, you yeah. know, they, they, they'll strike a channel in a second for that. Yeah. So I'm careful with that. But one of the celebrities, the artist there was pumping them up to prepare um, for the fight. I'm bringing this up to say, guess what he, what guess what his, guess what his, uh, his, his. Um, you posted this year. What was it? Tell the people. I remember you posted this year. He likened, and I'm, I'm not even going to say the country now, but he likened the country that they were battling with. We'll say yeah. that. Yeah. He called them you black woman. Yeah, I heard you. I seen that. Crazy. He says you huge whore. <clears throat> you whore. You be. You trash. Think about that. He first called her, you black woman. What the hell black woman got to do with that? What, what how the, we, it's how they see us. Do you understand? Yeah. It's a spiritual and metaphysical thing with the reemergence of your mother retaking the throne. Oh, and this oh. is exactly what Dr. Francis Chris Welsing talks about when she talks about that there are this genetic, this fear of genetic, genetic annihilation happens for some consciously and others what? Unconsciously. Yeah. You understand? Yeah. So their actions automatically, without going to anybody's school, Brother Rich, automatically produces this because it's really genetically written. This is about the retaking of the new world. And guess who has to be restored to her rightful place? Mm. Guess. We, you tell them, tell them, you know. Yeah. You black woman. Y'all, what do we have to do with this? It's not even logical, is it? To invoke that and to consider your arch enemy the worst name that you could think of initially. And this mm. is in the psyche of many of them. You understand? Mm. Is you black woman. You huge whore, you whore, you be, you trash. Mm. You understand? This is a vibrational spiritual thing. So I got to get us to understand what I'm talking about when I'm talking about who you're dealing with when you're dealing with the original man and the original woman. It's spiritual and it's, me it's metaphysical and it's physical. You understand? Mm. So um, a lot of them said that, remember the actresses here, the comedians here, they came out, got mad at Foundation of Black Americans because they felt like we weren't talking enough about defending folks. And again, I don't want to get too much into that. I'm just trying to show you where it seems like these wild attacks that you would never see them attack any other people group with but us. You understand? Mm -hmm. Indeed. What uh, what do you think about, what are your thoughts about when Cal, what I found quite interesting, um, you know, he moves with a certain conviction and, um, you know, if there's one thing we've been taught as a people is not to be arrogant mm -hmm. and, and, and to be humble. We're taught that a lot in our culture. But one thing he said that a lot of people will consider arrogant. He said winners aren't allowed to let losers rewrite rewrite history. I thought that was, yeah. And I'm like, I was like, whoa, what, what, what was your takeaway on when he talks about winners not allow uh, losers to rewrite? That's a that's a big statement. And uh What's your thoughts on that, Vicky? It's very profound. And I have to say, I agree with him mm. um, on that statement. There is, um, there's rank. Mm. And rank isn't about arrogance, right? It's about order. Mm -hmm. Can you imagine how military would work if there was not a proper hierarchy? Ooh. Can you imagine how the government would work without a proper hierarchy? Ooh. There's somebody that you salute to, baby. There's somebody whose commands and orders you take. Ooh. You okay? Okay. And, yes. And so when we see certain miracles, and I'm gonna say this, in the space that I'm in, people want to act like what I did was just just regular. Come on, uh -huh. it was just regular. Y'all weren't even doing it like this before. I come on. the haters, the people I had to come on. The people, the haters that's out there, the people that try to assassinate my character and actually physically threaten to take me out. And to do physical harm on your sister and did all this weird stuff nonstop for just years and years and years of the time. Y'all trying to act like 
Come on, somebody. And so when you don't honor and when you don't respect, and I'm going to say this, not just in the media space, but in any space, there's something that spiritually happens for you when you honor who you ought. When you respect who you are, ought, when you give deference to who you are, not who you think ought to be it. God, the day! People get mad at me because of my weird magic. You understand? Mm -hmm. But you can't deny the effectiveness of it. Mm -hmm. That's offensive. The way I do stuff sometimes, you understand? Mm -hmm. But it's why spirit rocks with me so heavy too. <laughs> I'm faithful to channel the mm -hmm. energy and high levels of potency, which is what makes me effective. Mm -hmm. And the professorial ninjas and the subject verb agreement ninjas think that they're more qualified based on that. And it don't work, baby. Mm -hmm. It doesn't work. Mm -hmm. The pediatric doctor that can have all the knowledge in the world, yes, mm -hmm. but that can relate to a child in a silly way to get the medicine in, mm -hmm. that can relate to a child in a silly, silly way to heal the child. Mm -hmm. He doesn't come with all that stuff, mm -hmm. all that crazy talk trying to prove a point, right? Mm -hmm. You understand? He does silly, weird, strange stuff. Mm -hmm. because he has to find a way to heal you in a way that you'll receive. Mm -hmm. You understand? Mm -hmm. And so sometimes as it's written by one of our mystics, guess what it says? What? That the divine will use not many wise men, not many noble, mm -hmm. but God has chosen the foolish things of the world to confound the wise, the base things of the earth. Ooh, okay. okay. So the stupid, the weird, the unacceptable, the felon is often who spirit uses. And if we're going to use the Sunday school version of Joseph, mm. y'all remember Joseph? The one that was loved of his father? His brothers wanted to kill him, but instead decided to sell him as a slave into another country. I'm talking about the Sunday school version. Mm. I'm talking about the moral of the story. He served there for about 13 years. His brother sold him there. And then while he was sold into captivity by his own, he was accused of sexual assault. And so they put him in prison while he's in a place of captivity. Mm -hmm. So on top of that, he's a felon and he is serving time in a prison in the land of captivity for a crime he didn't commit. And then something happened. After many years. Guess what happened, Brother Rich? What happened? This felon was put in prison years later with two governmental officials that the king threw in prison until they found out who was responsible for something that happened in the kingdom. Mm. And when he was locked up with two governmental officials that worked with the king, they both had a problem. Guess what their problem was? What? They both had a dream that neither could interpret. Wow. But Joseph had a spiritual gift. I'm trying to help somebody because you're asking me about spiritual revelation. That's part of what we're going to get into. I'm already telling you a little bit about it. I'm, I'm going to show you through this story where we're going in 2024. His frequency, his royalty was so profound that even prison couldn't keep him from attracting high level governmental officials in the belly of the beast. He mm. solved a spiritual problem while he was in the belly of the beast. And when he accurately interpreted their dreams, one was to live and the other was to be unalived. I'm saying it like that because I don't, you know, somebody's yeah. like, you understand. Yeah, 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 yeah. I'm trying to be careful with everything, Brother Rich. So bear with me, fam. That's why I'm talking like this. So his prophecy, his interpretation of their dream was accurate, Brother Rich. So the, the one that was going back to work with the Pharaoh, Joseph said to him, don't forget me. Mm -hmm. He said, when you go before Pharaoh, he said, please tell him and get me out of here. And by that time, by accounts, if again, Sunday school version, he would have done maybe about 11 years. Guess what the text says happened after that? What? It says that the man forgot about him for another 24 months. <laughs> wow. Wow. Another two years. Which brought, to, brought him to approximately 13 years. Mm. 
another two years. Guess what happened, Brother Rich? I'm trying to tell the family what's getting ready to go down spiritual revelations come 2024. I'm trying to tell you what you're getting ready to walk in to if you are divinely aligned. Watch this felon. The governmental official who dream he properly interpreted was before the king and the king had a problem two years later. The king had a cabinet of the CIA. I'm paraphrasing. I'm just trying to give you, I'm trying to bring us up to speed. Central Intelligence Agency. Is that what that stands for? Mm -hmm. He had high level FBI folks, right? Federal Bureau of Investigation. These are supposed to be the intelligence community, right? Those that have access to high levels of knowledge. And you know, they always surveillancing us. So you should know some of this anyway, even if you know it illegally, notwithstanding the FISA court. <laughs> Watch this. None of his wise men, it said, none of his magicians. These are just King James words that when you search out the etymology of the word, it really is talking about sorcerers, those that were doing magic, Brother Rich. These individuals couldn't come up with the answer. Guess what happened? The man who was locked up with Joseph says, I remember my mistake. I was locked up in the belly of a beast with this man who accurately interpreted my dream king. You might want to call him. Why, Brother Rich? Because all of the official people couldn't answer his question. Wow. We're in an age of artificial intelligence. Is that right? Mm -hmm. None of the folks could get the answer that the king needed. None of their academia. It didn't matter if they were graduates of Harvard or Howard. They didn't have the answer. So guess who they had to call to get this type of intel? <laughs> oh. Joseph. So they pulled the felon out of prison, got him ready, brought him before the king, and the king said, I have a problem. Nobody, none of my governmental staff can help me. He tells him the dream, and Joseph, in no limit of time, accurately gave him the dream the interpretation. It had to do with the economic situation of the country. And not only that, Joseph also gave him the solution to the economic problem of the country which saved the country from going into famine and in fact caused the country, the nation, to have a surplus during famine to where the world had to come to them for grain because of the strategy of Joseph. That felon in one day went, as they say, from the prison to the palace. It's your spiritual gifts in this time in 2024 that's gonna prevail. It's your spiritual gifts, it's your ability to tap into divine intelligence. It's your ability to hone your spiritual gifts that's going to give you the edge. And even among the outstanding, you'll stand out. Indeed. No, indeed. Yeah, you know, it, with um one of the amazing things, uh, Vicky, and that was that was a wonderful story. And um, you actually answered a question I was gonna ask later on about the importance of people like comedians invoking revolutionary change. People think it has to come from somebody that's intellectual or the spiritualist, but there's the average people, like you said, the felons or whatever that invokes uh, God's change for God. So I think you pretty much answered that. I definitely appreciate that story, that biblical story right there. Um, what I want to talk to you about is the energy of laughter. What, what I find, you know, with looking at a comedian, you know, he was talking about all these comedians and it remind me of back in the day, Vicky, when all of us were young. So, you know, for, for those of us who are over the age of 30, we could remember the deaf comedy jams. Mm. We could remember the comic views. We could remember stand-ups um, from the 90s and the 80s. You know, it was a good time in, ter in terms of, you know, the comedic presence. And we don't have none of that no more. But one of the things that is powerful, Vicky, is you could walk in a room. Right? And I always notice this. You could walk in a room, Vicky. Two people could be laughing like hysterically, and you don't know what the hell's going on for you. Just start smiling like, yo, what y'all laughing at? You yes, start laughing. Yes. You feel the vibration. Yes, you're, not, yes. you're, not, you're not being phony, but you feel it because the yes. laughter is just that powerful. You just start laughing. You'll just start busting out laughing. And then, then you'll be like, what y'all saying? What you? They'll be like, nigga, you don't even know who we laughing at. you laughing. You'll be like, I don't know why I'm laughing. It's just, it's, you know. But yes. the, laughter, the vibration is that powerful. We take it for granted. Facts. And we're talking about, you know, do you think this is going to spark an era of new comedians? Do you think this, what Cat Williams did and people seeing, you know, people think 
certain people with certain professions aren't important. When mm -hmm. people see how important this interview is and what he was able to do. Oh, he's a comedian. He does that. Will this spark an era of comedians that will invoke the laughter that we experienced um, as children, Vicky? What does laughter do? It opens you up in a very unassuming way, right? Mm. It removes blockages and it allows certain things to penetrate. Yes. Um, you know, have you ever been to like a steamer, um, you know, um, a sauna, you know, a place like that? And then um, even when you sweat, right, just being outside in the sun or whatever the situation is, and you're sweating and sweating. I don't know if you in school when we were in PE and stuff like that. And you would be kind of careful um, uh, if you're at home, especially if you have your AC on, you know, have your, your, your family would tell you, you got to kind of be careful because you open up. You know, and even though you're sweating and stuff like that, you come in, they're afraid that you might either catch a cold and start sneezing or something like that because you're so open up. Your pores are open up. So it makes you more susceptible to things. That's precisely um, what laughter does. And also, Brother Rich, which, of course, I didn't know we were going to specifically talk about this energy, but I think it's very profound. It goes back to the importance of also honoring the divine feminine, because a part of the energy of the divine feminine is actually bliss and pleasure. Mm hmm. Bliss and pleasure is an energy and a frequency that allows you to get certain things done with a relative ease and allowance. You understand? Um, and this is very, very important in terms of pleasure and bliss. In fact, it's one of the definitions that I use when I make my own definition of the word luxury, which is, uh, of course, not only abundance, but this notion of ease and pleasure. And I think that that's exactly why it's so extraordinarily important. I love that whoever just put that up about laughter and its effect on the immune system, which means that what's happening with, with, the, with the effect of the immune system, that means you're healing, right? There's a type of frequency and energy that's strengthening uh, that part of yourself that helps you fight um, uh, a disease and invaders as, as your immune system would, would um, defend against. Um, so I think that that's extraordinarily important. And so um, for me, I think that's the biggest thing is that it's just a new way of spirit channeling its message and its, 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 its data. It's a new way, um, a more pleasurable way. Watch this. And this is another reason why it's also a powerful feminine energy that all of the world needs to experience. It, it You're receptive, Yes. You're open, open. It's a receiving type thing. And it's so important. Somebody said to invoke laughter. One of the 42 ideas of my, I, I love that. So for me, that's an important attribute. Um, and so it goes to this notion of abundance. Um, and for me, luxury is also connected to spirituality um, because we don't see the divine living any just types of ways. And even those that are considered to be kings and pharaohs and ancients, um, the way in which they lived was meant to promote that. So when you're moving in that type of energy, you get things done and there's a greater corporation that happens with the entirety of the cosmos because of that flow in which you're in and that uh, in terms of laughter. When you're in a different type of vibration, like anger, like depression and those types of things, there's a resistance, you understand? So you're actually fighting against the flow and another force that's meant to come in uh, to bring a type of balance. So that just puts you in another unfortunate position really of warfare so this this really lets the guard down and so it seems um quite simplistic but it's an ingenious method of spirit to transfer information uh and to transfer yeah. knowledge i believe definitely no facts definitely a, a genius way and you know the thing about laughter and comedians the joker was you sometime i was talking to blue pill and blue pill was reminding me that the joker was he was the only person that was allowed to make fun of the king and get away with it. Mm -hmm. You make fun of the king off with your head. But yes. now Joker, you just looked at as a joker and whatever. You can say some shit about the king and everybody's laughing. And the king is like, oh, you're pretty funny. Come That's back so tomorrow. Good. That's so good. Yeah, so it's a That's great so way to deliver a message that normally could not be delivered. Yes. Uh, another thing that uh this is a great uh, great interview the hour went by so fast we're gonna keep it going though family for a little while longer i usually end up hour we're gonna keep it going for a little while longer one thing that he brought up during the interview him talking about the other comedians steve harvey cedric it it, it, it reminded you and he talked about the competitive nature mm. uh, of people and the comedians and what when he talked about it 
I see that competitiveness everywhere, Vicky. Mm-hmm. And like I said, this was such a learning lesson for us, this interview, for us to address topics that need to be addressed. Yes. Now, one of the things I noticed, if, if I could, if somebody would ask me the theme of humanity, competitive competitiveness will be on top of the list because competitive causes jealousy, hatred, mm-hmm. envy, spite, all types of shit. Mm-hmm. And what I noticed, Vicky, I've even seen within the spiritual community, conscious community, whatever name you want to call it, mm-hmm. a lot of people's master teachers, what they call master, they're very, they, they got a lot of competitiveness and I've seen it almost ruin them. I don't mm-hmm. interview everybody. I don't interview everybody. I've seen everything. I don't I'm sure you have. I'm sure. One, one of the biggest problems I've noticed with the quote unquote master teachers is their, 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 their competitiveness with other teachers. When they mm-hmm. feel like their teaching is being threatened by another teacher's wow. teacher, then you start to see the humanity, the human, the lower nature come mm-hmm. out of them. So I'm wondering, and these are brilliant brothers. These are brothers that will tell you about the size of the earth, the moon, the cosmos, this and that. But when that that competitiveness comes out, when somebody of 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 do uh, of their that's involved in their field is doing what they're doing, and 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 um. Cat Williams talked about that with Steve and Cedric mm. and, you know, and everybody. And I don't 